we can get started. Sure. Hey, so this is Wouter. Hi, Wouter. 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 Wouter, thank you. Sure, sorry. <laughs> Rhymes with Router. And, and this not with Scooter. <laughs> not uh, with Scooter. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about uh, Debian Code of Conduct, and it's a birds of a feather session. I expect that we'll be running some microphones around. Uh, you all will raise your hands, and we'll get to you as quickly as we can. Yes, please. Right. Um, just a few introductory words. Uh, first, where is this coming from? Um, I actually started a discussion on the Debian project mailing list uh, a while back to update the code of conduct that we already have. Who? We, just a show of hands, which one of you has knows that we have a code of conduct? Okay. Which one of you thinks it's a good code of conduct? Well, nobody very confident. Uh, just to show you, I mean, this is our current code of conduct. Um, there are some things in there that I think are fairly silly. Things like, um, do not send spam, send the advertising, uh, to look at the advertising policy. We have an advertising policy for, to deal with spammers. We don't actually ever use it. I don't think that's useful. There's something in here which I think is totally irrelevant about uh, swearing is illegal on package radio, <laughs> so you should not swear on our mailing lists. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, I think it requires a citation needed as well, because uh, who re receives fair packet radio? I don't know. Anyway, so I think this is totally, completely, utterly useless, as we have it right now. And we really, either we should throw it out or we should update it. And that's where this is coming from. Um, originally, I wrote some, some proposals on the Debian project mailing list. Uh, we had two drafts there. Uh, and then it was pointed out that maybe rather than updating the mailing list code of conduct, we should migrate more towards a gener generic code of conduct. Um, that idea held some merit, but it required more time than I had at the time. So I did it during DevCamp. And the idea now is to go over the proposal that I wrote. Uh, I'll close this so we can actually see. Um, and that we can uh, yeah, discuss it, maybe update it. Um, uh, after that, we'll have to uh, post it to some wider audience so other people can contact it. Uh, can comment on it as well before we can, of course, put it to a vote. So, um, just to keep things a bit structured here, it is in Gobi, everyone can edit it, but I would like to ask that we don't just go ahead and change things, but that we actually discuss things first before we update it. Should be fine, right? Um, other than that, I'll just go over what I wrote and then we can uh, discuss things. Uh, first of all, I wrote a little bit of my goals. Um, I think uh, a code of conduct exists pr uh, primarily to, to improve collaboration um, and to, 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 to have people, yeah, to give people tools to, to, to work against people who are not really uh, helping our community forward. Um, I think, therefore, it should be a short, I mean, a short list, not a very long list, because if it's 70 pages, nobody's going to read that, and we don't, might as well not, not have anything. Um, so because of that, you can't possibly enumerate everything, so you should be somewhat vague. Um, if you actually read other codes of conduct, I think they are similarly somewhat fake, and I think it's actually a good thing. Um, I don't actually explicitly say so, but in, in the code of conduct itself, but assuming common sense, good sense from people who read it is probably a good thing to do. Um, those who don't, we can deal with in other matters. We shouldn't try to fix that before the fact because we're not going to do that anyway. Um, as I said, I read several community codes of conduct. Um, uh, Stefano Zakiroli actually made a list on the wiki, and I went through each of them, read them. I used some of the concepts from them, though not much of the language. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so let's go a bit down. The first item in my list is uh, people should be respectful towards one another. That's actually something that comes up quite often in the other codes of conduct. I uh, th so basically the the the, the Titles are, are meant to be normative, and the rest is meant to be an explanation. Um, so the explanation here is saying, yeah, in a project the size of Debian, inevitably there will be people with whom you may disagree or, or find it difficult to cooperate. I think this is true for any community give, uh, uh, at a uh, particular size. And then we say, accept that, but even if that is a fact, even if you find someone difficult to cooperate with, remain respectful. Uh, disagreement is no excuse for poor behavior or personal attacks and a community in which people feel threatened is not a healthy community. It's okay to disagree with someone, it's not okay to let that disagreement turn into a problem for the community and so on. Any comments on, uh, on this, if people 
do, do we think this is a, a, a good thing to, to... Yes, go ahead. Uh, I don't like the, the last phrase. Um, it's not okay to let that disagreement turn into a problem for the com community as a whole. Uh -huh. Because uh, I think it, it's a two-side thing of, of two... Well, right, of right, two sides right. who communicate and... and it may be a bit harsh is what you're saying. Hmm? It may be a bit harsh is what you're saying. Or, or do, do I get you wrong? Um, well, well if, if I disagree with somebody mm -hmm. and uh, I'm called names uh, and I don't react to that, people right. may... Uh, I see a point, yeah. ...may yeah. call me for, for turning it, it uh, a problem uh, for the community. Mm -hmm. So... Um, uh, Sheesh, it sounds like you think there's a bug in this because uh, if somebody's not being respectful to you, uh, I mean, uh, as far as I understand it, the situation you've described, the person who is not being respectful to you by calling you names is already violating this, and it would be helpful for everyone if everyone saw that calling you names was a problem for the community as a whole, and you reported that. Um, so I don't understand what's wrong with this statement, then. It seems like you like it. Uh, Sven, in the back? Can I somebody give him a mic? Okay. I can't see you, sorry. I think that saying that it shouldn't turn into a problem for the community as a whole is giving it, it a too big scope, so that relatively small things might turn into a problem for some people, not others. So right. is this a problem to the community as a whole? No, I see, uh, I see your point. In, in the end, it is. But this phrase just makes it open for too much interpretation, Maybe that's I true. Think. Right, right, right. So we should probably adopt that phrase then. Um, the, the point is I wanted to final, uh, finish a statement that it's OK to disagree with someone, but keep it reasonable some, somehow. Um, maybe this phrase is indeed a bit too strong and we need to drop it. Ian, go ahead. I, I don't think the problem with it is that it's too strong. I think that it's too vague. Well, or that, okay. Uh, <laughs> what you need to do is you need to say what kind of disagreement is good and how we should... I, I'm not sure I have a good form of words, but we should have something like um, it is okay to disagree with someone. This should be done in a positive way or in a, in a, in a happy, constructive way. Happy, or constructive like way, right. Lucas? Yeah, my, my point is similar, actually. Uh, I think that this will be used uh, as a way to point people, uh, well, it will be pointed to it, showing that the behavior was not respecting the code of conduct. So you need to right, give right. some examples and some people need to be, well, you need to able to draw a line between what, what is acceptable, what isn't. Right. And with the, the that paragraph, it's very hard to the only the, the only the only behavior is acceptable or not. Right, right. The only um, comment that I have with that is if you start enumerating things that are bad, um, then you will inevitably forget something, and people will do something that is bad, yeah. and it's not in the list, so it's fine. So I'd rather not go down that path. Uh, but I understand your point. Uh, yes, go ahead. Ah, um, I think it's also a bit uh, in the current wording. It's the problem that it speaks about the disagreement. Uh -huh. In some form, every disagreement is, uh, if it takes a longer time, a problem for the community. Mm -hmm. But uh, even a disagreement in total uh, respect, if we cannot, it's if it's about something uh, important right. and we cannot resolve it, is a problem, and it has nothing to do about being respectful. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe we should... Um, does anybody have... Yeah, Sven, go ahead. Yeah, perhaps it should just mention what kind of disagreement is, is a good disagreement. I mean, um, when you are offering technical aspects that you think are valid points opposing your uh, discussion partner mm -hmm. uh, s uh, points, then that's okay. If you turn it into a uh, like personal attack, that which is already listed in that explanation, right, right. Um, it's just getting into the wrong path. Right, right. And maybe this whole 
last phase should just be removed. So and you mean from here? The whole, yeah, it's right. okay to, to have a disagreement, but, but keep it on, the, on a factual level instead of a personal. Would anyone want to update that then? Uh, I think it, indeed uh, going down that road is... is uh, Ashish, uh, go ahead. I was just going to propose removing either the it's not okay dot 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 clause or removing the entire sentence. Right. I think that that doesn't add anything, luckily. Okay, so let's remove that part at least. Um, if we're going to remove this though, I would certainly add some qualifier. Um, but maybe this qualifier, that's, that's the point. It, it was meant to be a qualifier. If that's not a good qualifier, I can buy that argument, but then we need something else instead. Um, if you remove the whole sentence, I think the paragraph stands on its own anyway. Just remove your, okay, remove your entire, uh, remove it from here then, right. Um, this is actually make, turning, it, turning it into a title now, it's not a comment, uh, it <laughs> is marked down, so that's not a good idea. <laughs> uh, right, so, any, yeah, that, re remove that too, right, thank you. Um, any more comments on this paragraph, or are we good? Does that satisfy everyone's objections? Okay, let's move on to the next one then. So um, this one is assume good faith. Uh, this is actually something I think I came up with myself and I'm entirely sure. Um, so what I've observed in many discussions is that people will sometimes um, react to a point on the assumption that people are out to get them. I, I'm putting it very, uh, uh, well, for, uh, I'm exaggerating here a bit. But ba you, you, I think you understand what I'm, what I'm trying to say. And the point here is to, say, to, to get people in the mindset that if somebody is doing something that you think is wrong, assume they mean well. Because we're, prob we're all basically trying to, to get, get Debian forward. We may have differences in agreements in what the best way to do that is, but that doesn't mean our end goal is different. And, that, and, and for that reason, I think it should, should be, uh, uh, yeah, that, that should be clear. Uh, so let, I'll just read the, the paragraph first. So what we say here is a project the size of Debian has many people working towards a common goal of a free operating system with a link to what we mean by free. Uh, sometimes the ways in we, which we try to reach a goal may differ from one person to another and uh, sometimes one person's immediate actions may be contrary to other persons. But please do not assume that uh, people are purposely working against your goals. They may just have different goals that you don't understand. If in doubt, ask. Remember that it's more likely that people are unaware of their bad behavior than that they try intentionally try to degrade the quality of the discussion. Any comments on this? I think you had one, Ian, go ahead. Right, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with what you're trying to do here in this first paragraph. Right. Um, but I think the wording could be improved, firstly by making it more personal, so by saying sometimes someone else's immediate actions may be contrary to yours, Right, yeah, I think that um, works. Because that makes it seem more personal right, to the that reader. Works. Yeah, and I also, agree. it would be better to say that somebody else's actions may seem contrary to yours, and that is indeed um, failing to make the very that? assumption right. that, that we're telling people not to make. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. Indeed. yeah, right. Um, um, and I'm yeah, it may, may seem to be, I need, you're right, okay. Can that, I think that's fairly non-controversial unless someone disagrees. Can we make that change? No, yes, I uh, just <coughs> want to mention something about the style. In the previous paragraph, you mentioned a project of the size of Debian. Here, a project of the size of Debian. And next time, it's a Debian is a large and complex project. It's maybe too reiterative. Maybe that's redundant. Yeah, good point. I hadn't noticed that. Yeah, thanks. Eriko, go ahead. Um, I believe that description contradicts the title of the description. The moment you assume good faith, then you do not, s in my opinion, you should not say that, make, go into details about uh, people not assuming good faith. Mm. I mean, when you say, do not assume other people are purposely wor working against your own goal, uh -huh. um, if I'm a new contributor and I read that, I expect to see a community with problems and where the majority of people think that everybody is else to get them. Um, I believe th uh, uh, the code of conduct should give the good example and assume mm -hmm. good faith on the people. And then right. you can say, if in doubt, assume good faith without going into details saying, don't do this, don't do that. Because right, it's... Right, right. And 
well, it's a bit of the same problem wi with the first point, and it's probably a structural problem of it all, which is the non-smoker problem. When you see a non-smoking sign, you mm -hmm. feel like smoking. <laughs> uh, because that puts smoking into your mind. Right, right. Um, I'll go out on a limp and assume you're n you don't have a, any better suggestion to this paragraph. Um, it would take me a while to think. About yeah, it. yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I see a point, but yeah, Ian. One here first. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Excuse me. Um, now I forgot it. Uh, uh, I think. What about keep in mind that we all have uh, similar goals and that uh, uh, other people might have only other means to get there. Ba basically, like yeah, I, th I like that. It's made more of form uh, formulating it in a positive sense rather than this somewhat negative sense. I, I like that. That's good. R good right, suggest. exactly. That's more or less what I was going to say, which okay. is I, I think in general it would be a good idea to phrase everything in terms of do this, assume that, rather than here do we not, have do, do not. not. Yeah, right, 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 right. Good, good idea, good idea. Um, so the question is only how do we do that in this particular case? <laughs> Anyone? Willing to suggest a or Ashish, were you doing the same thing? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so I'm gonna read the paragraph, but change it as I read it. Right. A project the size of Debian has many people working towards our common goal of a free operating system. Uh, I'm just skipping that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that part was just reading out loud. So yeah, that's no just there. Okay. No go ahead. So um, this part you would not change. Go ahead. The contributors of Debian have lots of ways of reaching that goal reaching those goals which may differ from your ways that sounds good I think uh, lots well lots sounds a bit informal though we can patch that up we yeah. can patch that later right never, never mind uh, it's helpful to assume that other people are working towards these goals semicolon <laughs> when you <laughs> wait, we can fix uh, it up later. <laughs> oh, yeah, Just I keep on reading. I'll type yeah. it off on the video if we don't get it. Okay, yeah. Um, so for the next sentence, it's helpful to assume other people are working towards these shared goals. Semicolon. If in doubt, comma ask. Period. <laughs> and I'm not sure, but it's helpful too. We can no. strike that. I Can have you? a patch for what you just said. When you say the contributors of Debian have, I would change it with. Debian contributors have. <laughs> okay, right, uh, so should right. I get my laptop, but then someone has to move this microphone around. Wait, wait capitals, obviously, yes. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we are mostly in agreement that if we phrase this as a positive rather than a negative explanation, we should be fine. Or yeah, Sven, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking one of your goals is to keep this short. Right. So, so I think that the first sentence just doesn't really belong there. We all know we are talking about Debian. We all know it has common a yep. common goal. Good point. Good point. So it's, it doesn't don't really need it, it doesn't really add to this explanation. We can start off by no. saying we have a common goal. Yeah. Period. And then or just the Debian contributors have a common goal and Nico? many ways to achieve that. Yeah. And and stating that level of obvious does risk sounding patronizing a bit. Fair enough, yeah. Okay, so we'll... Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's fair. So we need to reduce that and turn it into positive. Is there somebody in the back who wants to make a statement? Oh, David, yeah, go ahead. I, I wanted to point out, if we want to, to put it in a positive way, mm -hmm. we may... I don't have the words, but I have the idea. We should... Or we could say that everyone has different goals and different ways, and that's a good thing. And... That yeah, the fact, right, the fact that you have different <laughs> ways doesn't exactly. necessarily mean it's bad. Yeah, exactly. that's a good point. Okay. Um, somebody's making. Very good. <laughs> While that happens, may, may I uh, any ask my question? Uh, sorry, sorry, you had a point. Yeah. Right, excuse me. Or, yeah, my point was we discussed about disagreement before, and I think, I mean, that's quite an important point because actually this whole, whole document is about disagreement or disagreement Correct. situations. Yes. So maybe we should have an introductory point that actually mentions that we're happy about disagreement because it helps improve. 
And there could go all this discussion about Debian is large operating system. We have many people. We we expect to have this agreement. Very, very good and we're point. actually happy about that. Very good point. And no? So here is how we want to handle this because it helps us Just to be a or to produce a better product. Let me go up and see. Uh, right, so that probably would go I think that in here. Appreciating yeah. that we have disagreements is actually for the next uh, section that's also um, possible. What I was the title again? Be um, collaborative. Yeah. Be collaborative. Maybe maybe because we should make this the first section then. Maybe. Yeah, that we'll could work. see, I, th I guess. Um, blah, 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 blah. Right. So this this part actually comes from the KDE and so oh, go ahead. Um, when I first read the headline for, for this Assume Good Faith, mm -hmm. uh, I think there should also be mentioned sort of a language barrier. People tend to not be native speakers in such a big project and mm. there's also room for misinterpretation because people understand certain words in a different way. I did I consider it, it, that it, it when... Should be put somewhere into right. it. I did consider that when writing the original uh, draft of this, um, but decided against it because it became too long. If, if you start enumerating all possible ways in which people could be mi misinterpreted as not being of good faith. So it's it's a point, but I mean, I, unless you strongly disagree with it, I don't think it really belongs in there. So uh, yeah, I was just demanding that it's not only that many people are not native speakers, but we come from a lot of different cultures. Exactly. And that often means that even the same word, if understood correctly, can mean widely different things. So, th and so that's exactly the reason why I didn't want to enumerate, because there's too many ways in which it could be misunderstood. Right. But go ahead. I just think we should keep that in mind. Maybe we might add a small section about this mm -hmm. to just be aware of differences in, in language and culture. Right. We'll see. Right, so um, any more comments on this section? No? Okay, we'll move on to the next one then. Yeah, you, you do that. Do you still. Do you, you, that's your patch. Let me just remove it. Anyone have. I think this looks for really well, in my, in my opinion. Anyone feel opposed to this? To replace my proposal with Ashish's version here? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, two mics is a bit too much, I think. Um, it sounds, uh, it has a little bit of danger that uh, we get the new standard in Salt uh, that people will ask on the mailing list, are you doing this in good faith? Which could be the new form of asking, <laughs> are you trolling? Mm. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Sorry if I miss it, but ask who and ask where. Is that uh, specified somewhere? No, or it's not specified. Yeah. That's because otherwise, person. maybe just drop it or, I don't know, because right, people will just ask. Well, if, you, if you're in doubt, then you're not assuming it anyway, so maybe we should just drop if it. If in doubt, assume good faith. Right. <laughs> That's what the, exact, the entire section is saying. So the if in doubt part should maybe just leave. Um, even if I, I do agree that, uh, that the ask uh, thing shouldn't be there, it should be somewhere too, because it, it clarifies a lot of a mm. lot of stuff whenever you, you're well, talking with people who probably... Maybe, maybe we can add this to the, the section that uh, Sven was talking about, about introduction, yeah. Enrico? Um, I'd like to point out that m most of what I see there is completely redundant with the Debian diversity statement. Some of it is, uh, you told this, at the bar to me earlier, yeah. and I disagree. <laughs> because the well the especially that green thing is a longer and, well, so less what the beautiful basically what the phrasing the of. Basically what, the, what the, the diversity statement says is, uh, we welcome you if you're constructive, something like that, right? No, 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 in, in that case, it's uh, no matter how you describe yourself. Oh, this one, yeah, this part, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. Uh, yeah. We accept your contribution, and, and right, right. well, Maybe it's that's true. I think this should add to the diversity statement, otherwise, uh, or it should complement the diversity statement, not try to replace it. No, you, I, see, I see your point, I see your point. Um, Sven, go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't think that repetition here is really bad, because many people might be aware of the 
diversity statement, but many people won't and won't actually read it, even if they get a link to it. While many people actually look actively for code of conduct. So um, the code of conduct can link to the statement. That uh, would it be a good idea. And, and the statement is three lines, so it can be at the beginning yeah. of the code of conduct. That's also not a bad it's idea. Yeah. Um, right. Anything else? Go ahead. I'm sorry, I don't ha know your name. I've been just pointing towards you there. Uh, anywhere? I, I can't Bernhard. read from here. Bernhard. Oh, right. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I think the diversity statement might, uh, might be a bit of a distraction here because it's a little bit different. Diversity uh, a statement is that we accept uh, people coming from different things. Here is it's more about the, um, the, the in different language we speak, mm -hmm. including right, right. culture and language. Okay. Um, I would like to move on now because we are about halfway in my talk, or in our a lot of time, and we're not halfway through the material yet, not even remotely. So um, we can we can discuss this at length on the mailing list. I th okay. th I think it's clear that we need to do that. Um, we uh, at least uh, the worst parts have been uh, removed from that. So let's just move on to the big collaborative. This I actually got from uh, KDE mostly, and some other uh, projects that have a similar clause in there. Um, again, the is large. We should probably remove that, as Baby said. It is impossible for any person to understand. Do not be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Um, there is no shame in accepting that one cannot do a particular job on their own. Similarly, an offer for help should not be seen as a personal attack. When you made something for the uh, project, benefit of the project, be prepared to explain to authors how it works so that, ca that they can build on your work to make it even better. Enrico, go ahead. Uh, there is no shame in blah is patronizing possibly any time it, possibly, it yes. happens. Okay. Uh, I think the, this document should be an enabling document. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would see, I would be happier to see lots of phrases starting with it is okay to, rather than there is no shame in. So it is okay to ask for help. Right. Um, mm. It is okay to. to um, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I suppose. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so just for the record, I said that it is actually good to accept that you can't do everything on your own. Right. And especially. Anyone want to change that in that uh, yeah. manner? You want it? Okay, thank you. Um, bleh, what happened there? All oh, right, good. Um, <laughs> this is turning out to be very interesting. Anything else that we want to, to modify on this uh, section? Or is it good? I'll just scroll down a bit with Ashish doing rather weird things here. Uh, not that much. Um, I have to admit that. Um, uh, who's talking? I don't be see. Be prepared you. to explain. Oh, right. oh yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The be prepared to explain part sounds a bit uh, threatening for me. <laughs> it sounds like, yeah, you can do it, but be prepared. <laughs> ah. Yeah, this, this part, uh, this is because I want to make uh, collaborative. It, it, you can only collaborate if it comes from both sides. And I wanted to point that out too. But yeah, given the, I mean, I'd only written this on myself by myself, and maybe go ahead. Yeah, I, I do agree that, uh, with, with that part, maybe, with, maybe not with the. No, the mic is off, I think. Uh, I do we have a. It's not working. Is it open? I don't know. Oh, Thanks. Try it. I'm, I like the, that paragraph. Maybe, not, maybe the wording could, could be changed. But I, but I guess what you, what you, or w what we would like to say here is that uh, whenever you propose something, try something, do something, some people are gonna ask you about that, and because it's a collaborative thing, so right, right. so don't 
be prepared to explain. I like that fact, maybe with other with other words, right, but right. I like that because it's, it means like you're not walking alone, and people are gonna ask about uh, are gonna ask you about it. That's indeed so my philosophy behind it. But I understand that it could be could sound somewhat threatening. Um, so the main question is how we take that out of it. Beca but bec that was indeed my 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 my, my, my philosophy, but in, in in writing it. So. Um, will link with the uh, three else. Interesting. <laughs> um, any other comments? Ashish, go ahead. Oh, sorry, microphone. Does it work? What do you think of my patch? Do you want to merge it uh, for the first? Uh, it's uh, It's minus, 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 plus, plus. Well, actually, it's uh, I can run WDIF if you want it. No, it, it looks, it looks. I think it looks okay, but I don't know about other people. Any comments on Ashish's version? Yeah, go ahead. Didn't we have an it's good to ask? Uh, yeah, it's okay to ask, it's good to ask, yeah. I think we said it's good to ask. <laughs> Anything else? No? Let's move on to the next section. Um, try to be concise. Uh, this is both to avoid long emails and to avoid long threads. Um, both are a problem. If people send you an email with 70,000 pages, uh, then nobody's going to read it, and it's or, or you need to postpone it, and that's not really helpful. If people send the same message to a thread uh, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, like some people tend to do, then you have an issue there as well. So that's what this is trying to be, uh, to discourage it. I actually found that in one of the other uh, uh, codes of conduct as well. I think this was in the GNOME one. Um, making a conversation larger makes it more difficult to follow. Writing a long email means people may have to invest large amounts of time to understand it. When a long explanation is necessary, consider whether a sum summary is appropriate. Try to avoid repeating arguments that have already been brought forward. This rarely serves any useful purpose. Try to stay on topic, especially in discussions that are, are already fairly large. Any comments on this section? Enrico, go ahead. I would just keep the title and the honor the point you're trying to make by giving an example. Try to be coincise, no text, skip to the following one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting, but... Um, it's, it's far too verbose for something that's trying to tell me to be coincise. <laughs> I see a point. Um, um, uh, Ashish, go ahead. By contrast, the idea about adding a summary is kind of novel. I mean... So there, there is some content here. Yeah, that's that's what I was hoping for. It's already a failure if you have to add a summary. I don't think so. I mean, it's just a cl it's not a summary. It's, well, it's a summary for the, for the long email. Yeah. Um, well, some some s things just can't be explained in in ten words and do need need a long explanation. I mean, I've I've been there myself when, for instance, when we went to the the to Kiel for a, for an MCCIK meeting, we. No, no, sorry, it was something else. It was a, uh, uh, we, I gave a very long technical explanation of why something was necessary, and then I just explained, but this is what we really suggest. Um, sometimes you can't go around it, uh, and it, it makes sense in some cases to, to do that, I think. Go ahead. Uh, maybe if we, we would like to make a point here. Uh, in addition to suggesting using a summary, we could also suggest structuring the, the uh, text for the long email, like in articles. So you have a s short uh, uh, summary in the beginning right, and, right. and a structured email. Because you can follow a, a long structured email while you can't really follow an unstructured one easily. Is it incorrect? Uh, honestly, I don't think we should really come up with new ideas to uh, structure emails in this code of conduct, at least not in the first version. I mean, mm -hmm. this should be also about the current practice, which is positive, and not trying to I mean, this is an experiment, and you say everybody should start a summary. Maybe it goes nowhere, and it's really bad, and people start complaining. Where's your summary? And um, so, <laughs> yeah, this well, is a code it of it conduct. Is, which, so, I, I, I mean, I don't. I think the idea is good. I mean, we should 
we should explore it, but maybe not in the code of conduct, but first outside of it, and then well, it, it, if it, go if it I did, I did goes try well, to we just put it in in the second version. I did try to, to make it clear that, um, I mean, I said consider adding a summary. I didn't say add a summary. Uh, with <laughs> well, yeah, the, but the, the point here was really to say um, maybe, okay, sometimes this may be helpful, but it's something you need to decide. Enrico. Um, what I need was joking about uh, the IETF must shell definitions and so on. Uh, I think he nailed uh, uh, something that I was asking myself. Um, so far, I appreciate that this is a dump. Or well, it's, it's it's a formulation of a concern concerns that are shared by many Debian developers. Right, that's the the goal. Right, but how? So it's it could be like we are concerned about these and well and and I respect those concerns and mm -hmm. I share many of them myself. Right, but how is this code of conduct going to help? Is it a tool for them to kick people out? Is it guidelines to teach new developers? That's coming down. <laughs> We're not there yet. We're okay. not at that part yet. Um, but any further comments on this uh, section? Uh, anyway, I cannot give comments until I know what's the point of this. Right. In the back? Yeah, uh, we'll I come there you. soon, I hope. I just agree. Um, it's useful to know what this is all about. I'll skip to that one. Um, there's actually only one part here um, which tries to encourage open communication as opposed to private communication within Debian um, in, uh, yeah, in referring to the social contract paragraph three, which says um, we don't hide problems. Um, I'm not sure if this is really necessary. I, I, don't I think it was a good idea, but maybe it's not. Um, basically, the, what I was referring to is the in case of problems that follows now. We'll come back to the if open if we have time, of be open if we have time, and otherwise we'll just look at this. Um, the idea here is to say, um, so it says literally, well, this code of conduct should be adhered to by participants. We recognize that sometimes people may have a bad day uh, or be unaware, unaware of some of the, the rules in this code of conduct. When that happens, you may reply to them and point out this code of conduct. Such messages may be in public or in private, whatever is most appropriate. Um, however, regardless of whether the message is public or not, it should still adhere to the relevant parts of this code of conduct. In particular, it should not be abusive of or disrespectful. Assume good faith. It, it is more likely that par participants are unaware of their bad behavior than that they inten intentionally try to degrade the quality of the discussion. Repeated offenders may be temporarily ba or permanently banned from communicating through Debian systems uh, at the medium's administrator's prerogative. That's what it says. So basically, yeah, 10 minutes left. So basically, um, the idea here is to try to have people enforce it by themselves. Most people, if, if set, told in, in private that they are doing things that they think are, are, not, uh, well, uh, uh, are not helpful, will change the, the way, oh, stupid flies, will change the way they are, they are acting. Uh, and some will not, uh, but list masters today already uh, will 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 temporarily ban those people from our lists. IRC operators will temporarily already ban those from people from from IRC, and I think that that kind of way works well. Go ahead. Did you have anything to say, Andy? Or, um, or are you just holding the mic? I'm just holding a mic. <laughs> <laughs> anyone uh, anyone have any comments on that? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, what does medium's administrator's prerogative right. mean? Because uh, uh, originally this set, uh, because originally this, I, as I read it, I, f I fell over the, the sentence and I don't like it myself anyway. Either. It originally said at the uh, list master's prerogative. But the, so the idea was that um, it is their judgment call whether or not. So, so are um, these list masters um, uh, Debian? Um, well, lead us uh, delegates or... Um, uh, I think they are. Lucas, no, who knows, okay. No, because then I think that's um, a bad um, description. Um, the, the, the idea here basically is that um, people should at first comment when they think somebody is misbehaving. Uh, and if that doesn't happen, we should talk to ideally somebody who is indeed a, a, a delegate. I thought list masters were. If they're not, then we need to maybe n need to revisit that. Enrico? Um, 
when you suggest that the code of conduct should be pointed out to people, right? Um, I see. So the that means that the code of conduct becomes something that people smite in my face every time I'm having a bad day. Um, it's a recipe for disaster. I it's there's no way people get to like it. There's it it, it well. It's it's a strategy that means that people will increasingly get to hate it because mm. it will be used by patronizing mm. self-righteous people right. that decide that they're better than everybody else that day and they Maybe send it true. to everyone. Um, but if it's something you point people when they don't behave in an optimal way, then it's a guideline. Right. If it's uh, something that brings people to be banned, then it's a normative thing. Right. The two things not necessarily fit in the same document. If it's something that you are banned from, then it's like, don't do this, don't do that. Right. Uh, if it's something that is a guideline, then it's like, doing the this is better, doing that is the better. The idea is that, uh, I mean, repeated offenders, the idea is that people who are, uh, yeah, uh, Ashish wanted to say something too. Uh, the idea really is that um, people who really cross the line by a very large extent would be banned because we don't, don't really want them. Whereas if you do this occasionally, it's not really a big deal. Ashish? I think it's an interesting theoretical problem. I don't know of any... Oh. I think it's an interesting theoretical problem, Enrico. I don't think that it's been a practical problem for any of the dozens of communities that have had uh, codes of conduct, and I think that's interesting by itself. Even those communities that have codes of conduct... Ah, maybe it's a counterexample. Um, that are that contain lines like this. I also want to mention that uh, to sub to make a long story very short and make it recorded on Debicon video forever. Uh, I kind of troll. I kind of accidentally trolled the UD UDS uh, key signing party a year and a half ago, not realizing that I was being a jerk. And uh, the person who was organizing it emailed me and said, "Hey, I don't think you were," and pointed to whatever line means be respectful, being respectful to me as the organizer. And I was like, oh, wow, I feel awful. And then I had a conversation with him, and then uh, we all came to a happy conclusion. That's exactly the, the, the kind of behavior that I was expecting myself to and that I would like to encourage w or would like to see encouraged by people. Uh, indeed, if people start pointing out because people are ha having a bad day, then they're not re really being respectful either, and they're not following the code of conduct themselves either. So, uh, Ian, you wanted to say something? Uh, right. So um, one of the main reasons for having a code of conduct is because precisely the people, the forum administrators like list masters um, need really to have a clear mandate from the rest of the project about what it is that we are expecting them to do for us with respect to the you know, policing of behavior on the lists. And therefore, and, and that is one of the main purposes of something like a code of conduct. Now, the problem of being slapped down in public over alleged violations, I think that should be dealt with in the code itself. You should say, you know, don't do that. Um, um, that's so a short five minutes. Oh, I, anyway, I, I just wanted to respond to Ashish's comment that it's never a problem. I, in fact, people use the current uh, Debian list code of conduct in at least an irritating way. I don't know if it's actually destructive, but it doesn't seem constructive to me in many cases, to tell people that they shouldn't CC. I uh, totally agree. I mean, I and so on. And uh, you could argue that that's just because the list code of conduct is maybe not as constructive as it could be, but it's not. No, anyway. uh, I, I, I agree. And I, I mean, it's actually, you may have noticed, there's a, s a section here, um, we we'll probably won't have the time to, to go over this one. Um, it contains some sp medium specific codes uh, meant to be clear on one is for email, there's one for IRC, and there's one for for Planet Debian, I think. Um, these, this is actually based on the draft that I sent to Dash Project originally. Um, so I have not changed this much. And you may notice that the, the CC stuff in there is, 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 is not, uh, is, is, is just totally out of that, because I completely disagree with that, uh, with that kind of thing. You know. Apparently we're out of time, um, but yeah. Uh, go ahead. Um, one thing is, uh, if people point 
out that someone is misbehaving and, and it feels like uh, you're being slapped in the face, then usually the people that are pointing it out to you are they not are the people that are not following the code of contact. And that's something you can't really address in that way. There were, uh, people that will always be disrespectful when pointing right. it out. Um, we re yeah, one, one more there and then we'll, we'll, we'll stop and I'll have a... Um, uh, uh, <laughs> hang on. Uh, Maybe it would be useful to have some kind of tips to help uh, things not to escalate. Like having something that, that is out of the code of conduct, but something you could have a look to help you cool down and not react. I actually put um, a further reading section at the end with a link to Enrico's excellent document, the Debian Community Guidelines, and uh, maybe some some links, some other links that could be added there. I'm but awfully sorry, but yeah, I, I know, I know. We are, we are we have run out of time. Um, I intend to take this and put it on the mailing list, Debian project, um, with annotations what we managed to discuss during this buff and what we didn't manage to discuss, uh, so that will be clear. Uh, and I hope the discussion will go on there, and then we'll see what happens. Thank you, and thank you. All. See you later.